Driving fast is exciting, but the faster you drive, the longer it takes for your car to come to a stop. The screech of tires on the road lasts longer for a faster moving car. But why does it take longer for a faster car to come to a stop? Two words, kinetic energy. The faster a car moves, the more kinetic energy it has. For a car of mass m and speed v, the kinetic energy, or the energy of motion, is Ke equals one half mv squared. This is a quadratic equation. In order for the car to stop, work needs to be done equal to the amount of kinetic energy. Work is force times distance, and force is mass times acceleration. So the work needed to stop a moving car is mass times acceleration times the stopping distance. So mathematically, when a vehicle is brought to a complete stop, the following equation is generated. 1 half mv squared equals m times a times d. Notice how the value of the mass divides out. Solve for d the distance traveled as the car comes to a stop. This is the stopping distance. d equals v squared over 2a. But this equation assumes that you instantaneously step on the brakes. But there is usually a split second between the time you need to stop and the time you step on the brakes. During that time, the car is still moving at speed v. Assume that it takes two-thirds of a second to react. Our stopping distance equation becomes d equals v squared over 2a plus two-thirds v. Since car speed is usually expressed in miles per hour, we now need to adjust the equation so that the results are in feet, not miles. Multiply by 3600 over 5280, which converts from miles per hour to feet per second. Simplify to get the new equation. The values of A vary from 4 to 5. If you're bringing a car to a stop on a dry road, use the higher value. The stopping distance for a wet, rainy road uses the lower value. You'll see from the graphs that because stopping distance is based on the square of the speed, the faster you go, the farther the car skids to a stop. Accident investigators have to work backward. They know the braking distance by measuring the skid marks on the road. By measuring the skid marks and using the simplified formula d equals v squared over 2a, they can calculate the speed of the car at the time the brakes were applied. Then, taking these results and using the full formula, the total stopping distance is found. Alternatively, if an investigator knows the total stopping distance, they can find the speed of the car by solving the quadratic equation for v. Suppose that at an accident scene, the total stopping distance for a car is determined to be 250 feet. Was the car going over the speed limit of 65 miles an hour at the time of the accident? Let's use the TI Inspire to solve. Turn on the TI Inspire, click on Home, 6, and 2, input 0.0682x squared plus 0.4545x and press Enter. Now input 0.0852x squared plus 0.4545x and press enter. Click on menu, four and one, change x max to 100, y min to negative 10, and y max to 400. Now grab y equals 250. Press menu, six, and one, 
To find the intersection points of 250 and the two graphs, click on the intersection points and move the coordinate labels so that they are more readable. As you can tell from the intersection points, a car would be traveling 51.5 miles per hour on a wet road and it would be traveling 57.3 miles per hour on a dry road. In each case, the stopping distance indicates that the car was traveling under 65 miles per hour.